Okay, we're up, and this is Matthew, and he's going to explain what his job is. Okay, so um, in the house, there's a core team of people that are here, and we're here regardless of whether there's a restoration project or not. Um, and my job title is I'm a conservation assistant. So someone last week, and it's the best way that, to describe it really, is that they we're like the GP. So we look after the collection in the house on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, mm -hmm. We make various records, we monitor, we look at methods of cleaning it. Then, with the likes of any damage or if any treatment needs to be carried out, we then call in a specialist. And that conservator will then have specialised in a particular area, whether it's textiles, furniture, you know, paintings. And they then will do the more intense, more specialised treatments on each individual item. So it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a balance, really. Um, and it's a lot about monitoring and ensuring that we know the collection as much as we can so that we are recognising any changes in it. So this curtain here has been? The curtain at the minute is being cleaned. Okay. Um, so it is. And then, so again, that's the GP part. We're looking after the day-to-day -day maintenance of it. Yeah. Then using the damaged areas. Um, and at this point, that's where the, a conservator, so a textile specialist, will then come in. And she'll work on the, the way of buying that, where the whole thing will get hand stitched. Um, as they, they'll remove this lining, put on the new lining, and it'll all be hand stitched. They have stitched it, but they haven't just stitched the two parts together, they've done like a running consistently stitched through to try and give it a sort of a webbed support. It has worked in some cases, but then when you look at the legs of here, it has just torn around it. And it's because the fibres are now so weak. And because of that, we are likely now to look at really lining the whole curtain. And um, they would rather sacrifice the lining um, and ensure the survival of the curtain rather than try to keep everything and eventually damaging everything. The idea is that now where these tears are, the sunlight will penetrate deeper into the curtain and this effect will start to happen to the main curtain. So relining it really allows, um, it allows it to protect the curtain. On the examples where that is going to happen, they will take possibly one or maybe two sections of the lining and they will cut it and they'll archive it. So for our historical records, we'll always have and the knowledge and samples of what was there before. And the replacement that they'll put on, again, will be as, you know, as close and as accurate as they can get it. The real tricky thing is that the whole outside of it is hand stitched. So are all these individual stitches. They will all have to be taken out by hand. These ones will probably be easier than those ones, as you can imagine. And the new lining will then all get re-hand stitched. Um, they won't risk the likes of the machine out of, you know, it's quite an intrusive and invasive sort of process, the machine constantly hitting into it. And the risk is that that it could damage it as well. So it's, it's quite a lengthy, lengthy process. Um, and to give you a bit of a, an idea, these this window here, for instance, it is counted as three curtains because it has two curtains and a helmet. So the room that this has come from has twelve. We have a sitting room downstairs that has eighteen because it's six windows, three per window. And it really, you start to see how much that builds. Um, so there's quite... Pretty much, yes. But it's all part of it. It keeps me out of trouble. Thank you very much.